This is the Line A Pro Curve, and today I'm going to review it and tell you why this is my favorite curve out of all the selections we offer at ProStockHockeySticks.com. So this curve opens up from the heel like a P92. It's very lofty and it's almost like a wedge type curve. It's not like the P28 at all. It's a lot more like the OV, but way more usable than the OV. The best part about this curve is definitely the blade profile. It's almost identical to a P92. The lie is a touch higher and then obviously it has that P88 sort of semi-square toe. The other mod that I think is sort of underrated about this curve is the shape of the heel. It's sort of almost squared off and that really helps for saucer passes. So my theory is that this curve originally came from modifying a P92. They open up really similar from the heel and the profiles are also very similar. The line A has that big toe curve for the last maybe quarter of the blade. There's the heel modification and also the toe is more P88-like. But for guys who want a P92 with more toe, which is something that I always looked for, this is probably the best curve out there in my opinion. The lie is about the same as a P92. The only real difference is right at the toe. You can see it's just a little bit higher. And I think when you're playing with it, it feels a little more like a 6.5. I might call this the perfect toe shape. It has the height of a P92, but the shape of a P88. When we compare the two blade profiles, you can see what I'm talking about when I say that this curve originated from a P92. They're very, very similar. The only real difference is that heel modification, where the line A curve is sort of squared off there. And also it has a little bit more height to it, like not even close to a P92 max height, but it is a touch higher than a P92. And the last comparison I want to show you guys here is the profile of the P14 versus the line A curve, because whenever I post the truth about the line A curve and I say that it's a P92 that's been modified, there's always kids commenting, oh no, you don't know what you're talking about, it's a P14 with more toe. And that couldn't be less true. These curves are literally nothing alike. The only thing that's similar about these two is the shape of the toe. And make sure you've got your mask on for this next part, because it's absolutely sickening. So I'm not actually going to sit here and tell you that Patrick Laine only shoots like that because of his stick, but a lot of people don't understand how much of a difference it makes when you're using the right curve and the right flex for your playing style on your actual performance. Like, just look at me. I'm an absolute duster, and I'm just picking corners with this thing. I'm taking solid shots. They're pinging off the bar, pinging off the post. Like, it really doesn't get much more fun than this. So in the first shot, I'm trying to imitate someone who's maybe shooting off the wing towards the side of the net. So you can see both my feet are facing in the direction of my stick. Whereas in the second shot, I'm facing my feet towards the net, trying to shoot off my strong foot, which would be my right foot in this case, imitating someone who's shooting in stride or someone like a defenseman who's playing at the point where they need to keep their body facing towards the net. So for snapshots, I think that this curve blows everything else out of the water. The shots are quick, they're solid, and they go exactly where you want them. The accuracy with this thing is like nothing I've ever experienced before. So for shot mechanics with this thing, there's not really one specific way that you have to shoot. Uh, it's pretty versatile, like I said before, but how I like to shoot with this is really use the flex of the stick, pull the puck in with the toe, and then just let the stick do the work. All right, now we're gonna put that heel modification to work with some saucer passes. So nothing really can touch a heel curve when it comes to saucer passes, but this comes pretty close. Now that I rewatched the film, the pucks look like they're fluttering a bit, but that's only because I'm sending off these passes really quick. They're coming right off the heel, they're super fast, they're flying up, and they're landing perfectly. It's not really like the OV curve where you're pulling it back and basically sending off a wrist shot, which doesn't even really count as a saucer pass. Next up, we're going to test out our handles here with this curve. When I filmed this shot, I filmed all 10 sticks at once so I could get a good feel for how each one compared to the others. Right when I switched to the line A curve, it automatically felt a lot more comfortable than some of the other ones. I felt like I had really good control over the puck and I could keep it really close to the edges without ever going super wide. And I'm not sure if it was the blade shape or the lie, but something about this curve just feels really comfortable for stick handling. No, I don't think I'm like absolutely sick, like, oh yeah, like watch these dangles, boys. Uh, there's just no way to uh, describe this other than the word dangles, so let's go. So if you ever watch Lonnie play, you'll see that when he's skating with the puck, a lot of the time he's like doing some pretty nice moves, like he'll just like pull a backhand toe drag for really no reason at all. Uh, but I totally get it after using this curve because it just feels so good uh, to just like I don't know, move the puck around with this thing. It's so smooth, it's so easy. It's just like effortless. Again, I'm not sure if it's the lie or the shape of the toe or just the blade shape in general, but everything with this curve just feels really natural. It feels easy. You're not having to put a ton of effort into making these moves. They just sort of happen.
Definitely don't listen to Future here. I need to advise you guys, get your mask on right now. Wait, was that good? Like, our bar down one-timers good? Sorry, what was that? Did you guys say that two times wasn't enough? And you want to see this same clip three more times back to back? Okay, I got you. Okay, enough of the bar down one-timers. Just kidding, you thought I was done? No way, not with the line A curve. Every one-timer is going bar down with this thing. With the loft on this curve, you can just rip one-timers. They're pretty accurate, obviously not as accurate as the snapshots, but really, really good. Definitely one of my favorite one-timer curves. Snapshots with this are super accurate. They're solid, they don't flutter at all. They're quick, they rise up quickly, they're powerful, and the biggest thing is they're consistent. I don't know what else you could ask for with this, but due to Dave Portnoy's figure skating rules, we can't give it a 10 out of 10, but we're gonna go pretty damn close with a 9.5. I already know what people are gonna say. They're gonna say Geppetto. Those pucks look like ducks flying through the air. They're not solid at all. What are you talking about? And I can't explain to you how this feels. You just have to feel it for yourself. This curve is a nine out of 10 for sauce, not up for discussion. The blade shape, the toe, the lie. I don't know how many times I have to repeat this in this review, but they all work together beautifully to make this an easy 9.1 out of 10 for stick handling. I've been to silk markets in China, so I know what silk feels like, and this thing is silky. It's a lot better than a P92, however it's not quite as good as some of the other options I've tried out, which you'll see in later videos, but it's definitely earned itself an 8.5 out of 10 for dangles. For one-timers, I'll put it simply, if I still played goal, I wouldn't sell this curve. I wouldn't allow players on opposing teams to consistently be putting bar down one-timers right over my shoulder. The loft that this curve has really helps you get a hold of that puck when you're taking a one-timer and put it almost exactly where you want it. I'm going to give it a 9.1 out of 10 for one-timers. With a 9.5 for shooting, a 9.0 for saucer passes, a 9.1 in stick handling, an 8.5 in dangles, and a 9.1 for one-timers, the total average score for the lining curve is a 9.0. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this is my favorite curve that we offer right now. Whether it's shooting, saucer passes, stick handling, dangles, whatever it is, this curve does it well. It's like the P92 where it's just all around good, you can do everything that you want to do, but it does all of those things better than a P92. Now who would I recommend this to? Uh, is absolutely everyone an option? Because that would probably be what I would say, but for the people who want a P92 with more toe, this is what I would go for. Even though like the band probably looks tempting, it's a good curve, but it's a little bit boring. This one's just so much more fun. If you're a sniper, it's great for all types of shots. If you're a playmaker, it's great for passing and making moves. Even if you're a defenseman, it's so good for long range shots, keeping them solid and even picking corners from the blue line. Last thing, a quick plug for ProStockHockeySticks.com. Today we're focusing on our custom stick option, which is a minimum of five sticks. And you can really do whatever you want with this. You can do five completely different sticks. So if you want to get the boys together, you want like two left hand sticks, three right hand sticks. That's totally fine. Anything goes with these custom orders. And lastly, you got to follow Pro Stock Sticks on Instagram. That's where we have the best content. That's where you find out about new inventory coming in. All the good updates are there. So check us out there. Thanks for watching today, and we'll be back soon with another review.